Let's talk about an idea that I think Ayn Rand and Karl Marx probably agreed on, although I don't think either of them ever would have admitted it. Ayn Rand, Karl Marx. Egocentric capitalist versus egocentric communist. What do these two people have in common aside from being egocentric? Both of them had an intense belief in the power of creative work. Ayn Rand famously wrote novels like Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged, which feature creators, the captains of industry, the people who are entrepreneurs who are going out and creating a real difference in the world. Hank Reardon, one of the main characters in Ayn Rand's novel Atlas Shrugged, which is all about basically a massive labor strike from the people who are the creative engine of the world. She believed that there were people who were creators and a bunch of people who were mooches. And these creator people were creating all the value in the world for the rest of us to enjoy. And she basically said, if we remove them, if we remove these people who are the movers and shakers who actually get things done, then we go back to the Dark Ages really, really quickly. Hank Reardon is uh, kind of selfish, kind of egotistical, but he is an obsessed creative type who is all about making steel. Making steel and making money. That's all that he's about. In The Fountainhead, her main character is an architect, someone who is an obsessed, crazy visionary who doesn't accept what anyone else says about what he's doing. He doesn't accept criticism. He just knows what he wants to do. He has integrity to his creative self and is able to make amazing stuff in the world. What I find fascinating about this kind of awestruck description of these personalities is that what they are doing is creative work. They're making stuff. They are obsessed with making stuff and making stuff happen and seeing an expression of themselves in the product of their labor. Now let's shift gears and talk a little bit about Karl Marx and an idea that he was that I think may be the only thing he ever got unambiguously right. Karl Marx occasionally described humanity as homo faber, man the maker that part of the essential nature of a human being is that we make things and see pieces of ourselves reflected in the product of our labor. If you were to take a pottery class and make a vase yourself with your own hands, there is a very decent chance that you would set that on a shelf someplace in your home to display it and feel pride every time you saw it. Because that vase is a, an outgrowth from you in a real sense. You have made it. And as you've made it, you've made decisions about how you're going to hold your hands and how you're going to respond to the clay. And you've made lots of creative decisions that affect the outcome of that work. And then there are imperfections as well, and you can remember the story for those imperfections. And when this thing comes out and is done, you have this vase, and you can see yourself reflected in it. Some of your own history, some of your own vision of the ideal, some of your own ability reflected right there. And that feels really good. And you know what else feels really good? Let's say that you trade this with someone, or you sell this to someone, and you see them smile when they hold it, and see that they are pleased with this product of yourself, and you can feel in a certain way that they're pleased with you, that there's a piece of yourself that has been recognized in the world. And this is unalienated labor. This is what it's supposed to look like. Ayn Rand did not have a very high opinion of those who just went with the status quo and showed up, punched the ticket at work, and then came home. She thought of them as having less of themselves in it. There's, there's something lackluster. In, in fact, you're just a consumer. You go, you show up, you do what you're told, you come home, and then you consume things. What have you done? What have you created? Where can you see the reflection of your own choices reflected in the world? Maybe you can't. What value have you added to the world? This is something that she would have critiqued, and did critique quite a bit. Karl Marx believed that the factory stripped people of that sense of connection, of, of being one with the products of your labor, and alienated you. That modern society alienated you from the product of your labor such that, you know, you go to work at, a, let's say, a factory, and you do the thing that you're supposed to do repeatedly, but you didn't make the decisions about how to put this thing together. You didn't design it. You make very few decisions in terms of the operation of how the thing is actually put together. And then it gets sold by the company to someone else. And if you see someone else using the product that your company makes, maybe you feel a little bit of pride, but it's not the same as if you made it yourself. And so there are divisions that make it hard to identify yourself with the product of your labor and you are, in a sense, alienated from this necessary thing. Karl Marx and Ayn Rand both believe that this is necessary for human flourishing, that if you're going to be a successful human being, 
you need to have some creative fulfillment and make stuff. Karl Marx, in calling people homo faber, man the maker, believes that this is an essential part of human nature, and I don't think Ayn Rand would disagree. There's a number of stereotypes about members of my generation, the millennials, as they came into the workforce, and one of these stereotypes is that they were very driven by a sense of wanting to make an impact, of wanting to have a job that had a fair amount of meaning in it, and having a very high rate of dissatisfaction with not achieving that. I think there are a lot of ways to find meaning in your work. If you are providing for your family, that is a beautiful, powerful, eternal thing, and that should never, ever be dismissed. And if you are dedicating your life to raising your children, that is brutally difficult work, as I can say from experience, but it's also so incredibly important. You don't always feel that at the time, and that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult. But there is nothing else in the world more important than that. Millennials being dissatisfied with their work has become kind of a trope, and it's connected, I believe, to this concept of the alienation of labor, of not feeling creatively invested in what it is that you do. I once met an extremely successful attorney who was a partner in a number of firms and consulted all over the place who has a wood shop in his house. He has a garage with uh, table saws and routers and planers and all the stuff so that he can make cabinets. In other words, this man who is working lawyers hours, in other words like 80 hour work weeks are not that untypical, would come home after working at this extremely high-paced, extremely skilled, extremely intellectual job with an unmet need, an unmet personal need that he fulfilled by working with his hands to create something that he could identify himself with. I find that really, really interesting. Maybe you feel this desire to be creatively working and to make things. Maybe you are at home a maker. Maybe you play around with Arduinos and make computerized stuff. Maybe you have a wood shop at home. Maybe you do origami or paper mache. Maybe you have found a career that allows you to work for money doing something that you feel fulfillment in creatively. I just find this idea incredibly fascinating that there is a, a kind of a core idea that is really core to what Ayn Rand is all about and really core to what Karl Marx is all about where I think they agreed. And I think both of them would say that our society largely has a problem with alienation of labor. What to do about it? That's another story. I know that I personally have an intense need to be creative and to work with my hands and to make stuff. Whether or not there was a YouTube channel, I would still be making spinning wheels and playing around with 3D printers and digging dirt out of the backyard to try to make pottery. Because that is something that I, I need in order to not go crazy and to feel like I am participating in this world and to feel some satisfaction and meaning. But I wonder how intensely other people feel that. Maybe this is something that you've experienced. Maybe this is something that some people have more than others, where some people just have to make stuff and other people are fine not. Maybe alienation of labor is something some people have a, a stronger sensitivity toward. Please leave a comment. I would love to hear if this is something that affects you and how you respond to it. So Ayn Rand and Karl Marx both essentially agreed on this idea of the alienation of labor and of the supreme importance of creative involvement in the products of your labor, of making stuff and making stuff happen. And both probably would have agreed that alienation of labor is a problem. Not being, not engaging in that kind of creative labor is a problem. That is not good for human flourishing. The question remains, what do we do about it? Maybe you have a job that already fulfills you creatively. If so, awesome. Maybe you've never really wondered about alienation of labor. Okay, that's fine. Maybe you fulfill that need, like my lawyer acquaintance does, by going home and working in the wood shop and doing something creatively at home with your hobbies. I would love to hear about more solutions to this. Please, again, comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe below.